Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today's project is a two-tote worm bin system. This is actually a vermicomposting unit. You're going to use composting worms to take your kitchen scraps, transform them into garden soil, and a byproduct, worm tea, which is going to end up in the bottom bin. Be using a 10 gallon and an 18 gallon tote that I picked up at the local home improvement store. This is a very easy project and it's gonna take you probably less than an hour to accomplish. In addition to the bins, you'll need some screen for the vent holes. I'm using some old screen or you can buy some screen hole patches that are pre-cut squares. The tools for the job include a drill with a one and a half inch hole saw and a medium sized drill bit, a ruler, scissors, a box knife, a board to serve as a base for cutting, a sanding sponge, and a caulk gun with a tube of exterior grade construction adhesive. I had my safety glasses on hand even though I forgot to put them on. The basic configuration of our worm composting system is going to be the top bin sitting inside the lower bin. The worms and the compostables will be in the top with drainage holes in the bottom of that allowing it the worm tea, the compost tea, to drain to the bottom where it'll be captured and reused as fertilizer. We're gonna start by taking the lid off this bin and setting it aside. And I'll show you what we're gonna, you were gonna use it for something else. And we're gonna set our small bin inside the lower bin. So while this is configured like this, we're gonna drill our eight vent holes in the top using our hole saw. You can mark these out if you wanted to, but I'm gonna eyeball it. Once this lid's drilled, we're gonna take it off, drop the debris into there, and we're gonna grab our sanding sponge and clean up the holes. Using the corner of the sponge here, I'm just gonna kinda clean these holes up a little bit. Don't wanna score this surface on the outside too much, but we are gonna score it on the inside on purpose to help anchor the screen. Now once our holes are cleaned up, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna prep the inside here for gluing the screens in. This is so slick, if we just put the adhesive right on this hole, the screen's probably gonna pop off. So what I'm gonna do with my sanding sponge is, is roughen this up to give me a good gluing surface. All right, now that our lid is all roughened up, we're gonna glue on our screens. One quick note, if you're gonna use the repair screen tabs, then you wanna make sure that your hole saw bit isn't bigger than your squares. So in this case, you'd probably wanna use the three quarter inch hole saw so that you have enough surface area outside the hole for it, the adhesive to attach. Since I'm using old screen, I can cut the screen to whatever size I need to match my hole saw and I can drill less holes. If you're using a three quarter inch hole, you probably wanna do 12 holes instead of eight, just so you get enough air volume moving in and out of the worm bin. All right, so I'm gonna cut out the squares to cover the holes from the inside. Of course, I'll glue them from the inside as well, and I'm gonna leave about a, a good three quarters of an inch around the hole for adhesive. So I'm gonna cut a strip that's the width that I want. And then I'm gonna cut off sections for each hole. And you can see why those screen patches wouldn't have worked in this situation. Now that my screen is cut, I'm gonna get them out of the way. I'm gonna put a bead of the construction adhesive around each hole.
right, now I'm gonna press each screen into one of the holes. And when I got a big glob like that, I'm gonna be careful to pull it back away from the hole so it doesn't show through onto the front. Using my finger, with a glove or without, I'm gonna work the adhesive through the screen all the way to the edges. You don't have to go right up to the edge of the hole, just enough to keep the edges down. So I'm gonna repeat that step for all eight screens. You can borrow from the globs on the other circles to, if you don't have enough. If you're in the sun, this stuff's gonna to wanna to dry pretty fast, so you need to work quick here. You can always get them all set and then come back and do your coverage. If you run out, you can always put down a little bit more to spread out. I like having these anchored down really well because otherwise the worms like to get behind them, and that can, it wouldn't hurt them to be back there, but it's hard to get them out of there. So the more you cover on the edge of the screens, back from the hole, the better adhesion you're gonna get overall. There's a lot of moisture inside this. We're using an exterior adhesive, that's important. Don't use an interior adhesive, they'll drop right off. Of course, once you get this all spread out, now the sun is your friend, you can set it somewhere in the sun to dry. You can see I did a pretty good job of not getting any on the front. I got a little bit right there. But those screen holes look nice and neat. All right, so we'll set this in the sun and we'll be on to our next step. You got a couple options as to what you can do with the second lid. And that pertains to how you want to separate your worms from your compost. Now one way is to leave it just like it is and use it kind of like a tray and manually separate your worms from the compost. You basically take the, the finished compost out, put it in a pile, you, you pull it apart, and as you do that slowly, the sunlight chases the worms deeper in and you're able to peel back the top and separate your compost that way. Some people don't want to do it that way. The other option is what I'm going to show you how to do, which is we're going to create a perforated divider that we're going to drill a bunch of holes in this lid and we're going to cut the edges off make it smaller so it can fit down inside here so when you get a you know a certain layer of compost in you'll set this on top of that you put your next round of compost on top of that and then as the worms finish the compost down below they'll move up through the perforations they'll start to live on top then you can lift this out take the compost out or dump it out and then dump the young, younger compost in, then put the perforated layer back on top of that and start the cycle again. That's probably a lower maintenance option and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're going to use our bins as our workbench again and I'm just going to drill a bunch of holes in here. I'm probably going to stay about an inch in from the edge because that's where I'm going to cut it. Use my sanding sponge just to clean these holes up a little bit. It is purely a cosmetic application. The worms aren't going to care. Now carefully lift this off. Let's dump our debris. Now the reason I'm putting this debris inside the bins is because I know that it's LDP, low density polyethylene, number four. So if I can find a recycling location for number four, then I can actually recycle this material. Now we need to go inside of something, like a bottle of the same material, if you have a laundry detergent bottle sometimes, or LDPE. So take a look at that. And if you can recycle this, that's great. It's also making our cleanup a little easier because it's all in one spot. 
So now that I've got this perforated quite uniformly, I'm going to cut out around the edges here and we'll make sure that it fits down inside. So to cut out my perforated divider, I'm going to use my square and an X-Acto blade. Let's get that started. And you could probably freehand this too. It's a little hard to get uh, the ruler down inside that gap. This stuff's pretty soft, cuts pretty easily. In fact, you can even cut it with scissors, big scissors that is. Again, the worms aren't gonna care if this isn't super straight, so freehanding this is just fine. But know that you can use a ruler. And just to prove to you that you can cut it with scissors around the corners. So the worms don't get injured on the sharp corners. So if all you have is scissors, that works just fine. All right, the last test, let's make sure this fits. And here's how our little perforated divider will fit down inside. Now I could have made this probably a little bit bigger, but the worms really like to climb the edges, especially as they climb up for their walkabout and at night. They are night crawlers. They'll come up and deposit castings along the top at night. That's when they make friends as well. So not keeping it right up against the edges is probably helpful. And the last step in our construction process is to dump our debris into the bottom bin here. And we're going to now drill our drainage holes into the bottom bin. For that, I've got a, well, medium-sized drill bit. Size doesn't really matter here. We're just gonna put a bunch of holes around the outside area here, and then in this inside area here. The two low spots, we're gonna perforate pretty liberally with probably 5 16 holes. Pull a few of these burrs off on the bottom. Now we'll grab our top out of the sun. With the lid on, our project is finished. And now all that's left to do is put the worms in. But that will be another video. Composting will save you money if you pay for trash by volume. For those of you who don't, think of it as getting free organic fertilizer and premium garden soil. Here's the video on adding worms to the bin. And here's another one on the eight different ways that I compost, if worms aren't your thing. That will also direct you to DIY videos on those projects. If this is your first time here, subscribe to get new videos every Thursday and Saturday. I make these videos because I believe that it's up to us as individuals to lead the green movement. And that we can find ways that sustainability can put money back in our budgets every month. Our mission at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more Green Shorts DIY.